My name is Kimberly, and it's been a while since I shot a video blog. But around six months ago, I told you guys that this is an endeavor I want to pursue. And what the hell? We're in the middle of a nationwide quarantine, so I thought I would give it a go. Okay, now, just for a little refresher, to remind you, I am a 38-year-old woman who has a mild case of spastic cerebral palsy. Um, I was born in the year 1981, and I have an unusually long memory, which may explain why I am such an 80s fanatic. Now, if I move my head, you can see the Teddy Ruxpin behind me. He was a gift from my friend Melissa several years ago. Hi, Melissa. And um, if you've watched anything I've done at all, you know that uh, ever since the rental crisis, particularly in California, where I'm from, <sighs> I've been having quite a time. I've had an unusual life due to different situations that I've been in for most of my life. And one of the things that I'm not going to be shy about talking about on this channel is the fact that I am, among other things, a sex abuse survivor. But that's another video. And I promise you guys there are days in my life when I look a lot better than I look right now. But Every YouTuber needs a gimmick, and right now, mine is pajama or moo, moo videos. These particular pajamas I'm wearing... ...are courtesy of the Lodi Junction. They're the ones who furnish most of my clothing for these pajama and moo, moo videos. And you will see me looking better. I promise. There are days when I look like this. It's not one of them, but I wanted to have a video up by Easter Sunday. So you're taking me like you see me. I've also taken a shine to wigs, but... That's another video also, and it has to do with my disability. Today, I just want to say hi and catch up and sort of get my feet wet. Also, I'm a superhero fanatic, DC in particular, and I have somewhat of a problematic caffeine addiction, although this... is cream soda today. But I may make my weird mug collection another little gimmick of my videos. I'm from a little town in the Central Valley of California called Woodbridge, and I also consider myself to be from Lodi because really, like, there are stones throw apart and whatever. Woodbridge is basically Lodi 2. But due to the rental crisis, I am now existing in Stockton. It started in 2017 for me. Now, because of various reasons, and because I had a very tumultuous, somewhat abusive life growing up. I knew that I wanted to be on my own at the age of 18, so I moved out the spring after I turned 18, and I've been on my own ever since. Before this place, I had two apartments. The last one I was in was a big two-bedroom for all of my equipment to help with my disability in a nice, safe place in Lodi. I lived there for 11 years, quite happily and 
um, basically independently having housekeeping help on and off. Sometimes I need it, sometimes I don't. It just depends. But I absolutely have had no physical help, really, since I moved to Stockton. So, I had been living in my apartment that I loved happily for 11 years. When all of a sudden, this young guy, probably not much older than I am, and again, I'm 38, so <laughs> I consider that young. Um, so this young guy, he buys my little fiveplex apartment complex and decides that one by one, he wants to boot us all out to pretty much double the rent. I was second to go. First was my neighbor and friend Allie, who at the time was in her apartment with a six week old baby and a therapy dog. Hi, Allie. I'm continuing my videos. Yes, I am. And don't worry, when you see me in Target, I know exactly who you are. I forget nothing. People just always seem to catch me when my battery is pretty much empty, so to speak. So my friend Allie, quite a bit younger than I am, was the first to be kicked out unjustly. The landlord said it was because her therapy dog was not authorized. And yet, the people who lived next door to me had a giant German shepherd who was an untrained troublemaker. So, it's whatever. Whatever. He's full of it. He was full of it, essentially. <sighs> now, I watched Allie and her mom pack up and leave with her baby with a great deal of anger. I had a feeling about four weeks before it happened that I was next on the list. And sure enough, ironically, three years ago today, I was served with the notice that I had to vacate my home of 11 years. I'm an unusual person and have been given to premonitions and paranormal experiences for most of my life. Whether they are good or bad, most of the time they're pretty much on the money. And this situation was no exception. So, you may be asking yourselves, what did I do? Initially, like anybody else who has to go through that, my first reaction was to panic. And when something like that happens to you, and you have been through what I have been through, I have post-traumatic stress disorder. So I have spent my entire life waiting for the other shoe to drop. And so at first, yeah. I panicked, faith or no faith. It took me four days to even process the idea that I had been served with a notice to vacate my home after not doing anything wrong. That stated, there are several social agencies that are meant to help the disabled here in the Central Valley of California. I am a client of one of them. They shall remain nameless. Because I don't want them to nail me for what I'm about to say. And that is flatly, even though I called them four days after receiving my notice to vacate my home of 11 years, they didn't do their job. I tried calling my social worker, 
her team leader. I played endless games of phone tag. <sighs> Had to contact legal help and another social agency on my own. And then somehow, some way, the news media was contacted. And the Lodi News Sentinel, the local little newspaper where I grew up, did a, an article on my situation which I was not impressed with. I have to say that. I apologize. Among other things, I'm a writer. I'm also working on my autobiography. But the article was enough to give me a six-month extension in my apartment once the landlord saw it. See, I'm a tough girl. Um, if you're going to mess with me, we're going to play hardball. He wasn't ready for that, I don't think. So he gave me until the 10th of October to vacate the premises. The day before I was to vacate, with a few friends and select family members around me, the social agency that was supposed to be working with me finally called me back. Six months after the initial event. <laughs> you see what the problem is? The day before I was supposed to vacate. Okay, so everybody's moving me out. And I begin work with a, another worker from a social agency. Meanwhile, I spend the next two and a half months or whatever it was crashing at other people's houses, which is not an easy thing when you're in a wheelchair, by the way. Um, and I am low income for the moment because of my disability. Although I can work and have, I spend time working with children that have varying disabilities when I'm able to. And I'm finally starting a new career because of this mess, but I'll get to that in a while. So a couple of more months go by, and now we are pretty much hitting the end of December 2017. <sighs> Nobody will take my housing assistance. I need a two bedroom because of my equipment and because of my disability and because of the chair and yada, yada, yada. Nobody wants to take me. So finally, I run out of places to stay. And in the end of December, the social worker that was vendored out from my original company that I was supposed to be working with finds me a temporary one-bedroom apartment in Stockton, California, where I'm sitting now. Now, I live in a place called Polo Run, and um, if you are from this area, you know what Polo Run is, and I'm quite sure you are cringing. I, however, was naive to this because at the time that all of this was going on, this place was supposedly being remodeled to be in compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act. So it wasn't like I could go see it. And um, all of the apartments that were supposed to be customized to people with disabilities were gutted. I was initially supposed to get an apartment that is, for lack of a better description, across the way from me. That's the apartment I was promised. And 
I'm not in it. Um, they did this thing where they wouldn't allow anyone to see the apartment before signing the lease. Some places that's common practice. I know of a couple places in Lodi where that happened and it turned out okay because they ended up beautiful. Um, so I figure whatever, but they're senior complexes and due to age restrictions and the fact that I'm only 38 years old, I couldn't get into those, disability or not. So on emergency contingency, I have to take this one bedroom at Polo Run, right? And they promise me when I come in for my lease signing in a Wonder Woman hoodie, because that's just what I do, that I'm going to be safe and everything is going to be all right. But they tell me they decided to give me an apartment on the other side, closer to the office, supposedly so that they could keep an eye on me because I am a single woman in a wheelchair. The manager at the time even gave me a hug to welcome me into the complex. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where the fun starts. Then I was taken to see my unit. It is a third of the size of the place I was living in and, um, for lack of a better description again, I knew that I wasn't going to fit in here. Um, and I don't fit in here. A third of my belongings are not even in here. Um, but that's a good thing. And uh, I just spent the rest of that day crying because I knew right then I was in a place that I didn't want to be. But I also have a great faith in God and whatever lies beyond this earthly plane. I'm a weirdo that way, right? So I figure, okay, God's putting me here for a reason. I decide I'm going to make the best of it. So... I put on a new Kids on the Block record and uh, had a glass of wine and just decided I was going to chill myself out. If you know me at all, you know that I have a strong emotional attachment to the new Kids on the Block. And I have since the day that I turned five. I would not say that I'm a fan. It's not that kind of an attachment. It's something that goes beyond that. Like the rest of most of what happens in my life, it's extremely unusual. And um, they have pretty much gotten me where I am today as far as emotional strength goes. I have been to see them eight times. And... Um, while I'm discussing that briefly, I want to give a shout out to them and tell them thank you. So, Joe, Jordo, Jonathan, Danny, and Donnie, hi! I love you guys. Sorry I missed the last tour, but I will be back. At the time, though I didn't have any idea of why, I had to hold on to the idea that God was putting me into Polo Run for a reason. So, I'm extremely depressed, but I'm making the best of it. You know, I'm starting to unpack my stuff, have my nephew Bear and his friends over, to help me unpack too and to start to decorate because where I am I like to keep it bright and colorful and vibrant and retro so whatever right I'm here for about a week 
and I'm a very independent girl. So one day I am going out to get rid of my garbage. Well, of all the luck, what happens to me? My garbage bottoms out all over the ground in front of my door. This man, who is quite a bit bigger than I am, comes to me and asks if I need help. First, acting as though he is going to pick up the garbage and carry it on for me as I'm trying to get, you know, forward out the door with it. Instead, he decides that he is going to try to grope me and shove his way into my apartment. Now, I mentioned before that I am a sexual assault survivor. Um, so this didn't go well for him. Because in my 20s, I took self-defense courses that were adapted to my chair. So I was able to sort of use leverage to push him away from me and slam the door before he could really get a hold of me and get in here. But that was my first terrifying experience. Next, I found out that some of my neighbors like to argue a lot and throw things down the stairs. So that the next morning when I got up, there would be broken glass and various other kinds of debris, depending on the day, all over the walkway. So, at that point, things are going so extremely well here at Polo Run that I decide I'm going to spend as much time back in Lodi as I possibly can. Because guess what? <laughs> the management is lackluster and they don't do much. In fact, I've had to call the housing authority on them to get basic repairs done. And I've never really gotten entirely unpacked here. Because I don't really have consistent help. And um, hiring help I don't really want to do. Because quite frankly, I don't want to bring anyone else here. In this situation, in this place. Apparently, it's a known drug den, and um, I don't want to be here, let alone put that on someone else who may be working to help me. So, um, I went back and forth between this apartment and Lodi as much as I possibly could. And uh, I was ecking it out for 14 months or so. Then, on February 11th of last year, I'm just coming home from Lodi like normal. I figure, eh, I am just going to go home and make a fresh pot of coffee because my caffeine addiction needs to be nourished. Instead, I came home to find a break-in. My apartment was ransacked and torn up. I called the police and they took three hours to get here and listed my eyes as blue. My eyes are brown, folks, and my hair as strawberry blonde. I knew right away that they weren't paying attention, and um, they didn't do much but create a report with incorrect information. It wasn't until I called my friend Elsa and her husband for help that um, I was able to actually start picking things up enough so that I could use my bathroom, and leave for safer places. 
my one year lease for this place was up that March. And I started to look for new apartments right away. But um, I'm still looking. I'm running into the same problem. Nobody will take my rental assistance, even though I'm a good renter. And uh, I stay in one place for a long period of time. And I pay my rent on time. And the stuff from the housing authority is pretty much guaranteed money. Mm. Nobody's really thinking about that or thinking about the fact that maybe the homeless rate is skyrocketing in California because, well, in a lot of cases, the rents are just too damn high and we can't afford it. <laughs> but if you know me, you know I'm no quitter. So, long story, as short as I could possibly make it, that brings us up to speed here. Um, I have been trying to move since that break-in happened, but no dice. And uh, you may be asking yourself, what did I do? Well, first things first. I knew that I had to save enough money to not only get out of here, but to start my college education again. Something in my gut told me it was time to go back to school. Now, as I've said before, I have worked with children on and off, really, since I was a teenager. and. Um, I, I've tried a little bit in the teaching field, but truth be told, that isn't really what I want to do. So my first step was to contact the housing authority. And they have something called the self-sufficiency program. And <sighs> that the condition is they would help me with my schooling so long as I sign a five-year contract that I would be at least pursuing some kind of a career at the end of it, disability or not. Going back to my history as a sexual assault survivor, I don't use the word victim because I stopped being a victim a long time ago as far as you know, being afraid to speak out and speak up, but I will be doing videos about that. Um, but because of that history I have with sexual assault and family trouble and abuse, I have known since the age of six, really I have, I was an unusually smart little girl, that I wanted to be a psychologist because... At the age of six was when my perpetrator was caught with me. He was 14 at the time and uh, my first cousin. But my doctors right away when I entered therapy, they told my mom with me present that they felt I was going to grow up to be a trauma abuse therapist just like them. And considering everything that has happened in my family, I am a natural at that sort of thing. I have supported the other children in my family emotionally where I can, who were a victim of this pedophile at one point because he pretty much got a hold of everybody in our family. So now, what am I doing? In January, I returned to college to begin the pursuit of my goal, which is intermediate, of getting a master's degree in psychology so that I may live out what I consider to be 
one of my big purposes in life, which is to counsel other children who have been abused and hurt like I was. Now, in the middle of this, I have discovered that um, there are ways for me to own my own home. So I've been pursuing various different home ownership programs in the state of California. And I, I really think that with the rents as high as they are and my situation being what it is, that I'm really going to at this point end up buying a home before I find another rental. And if I don't, I intend to buy a home very shortly, as soon as I can manage it. But um, I finally figured it out, I think. One of the main reasons that God put me at Polo Run is so that I would find my strength again and get on my feet and finally pursue the calling he put me on the earth for. I am going to go all the way through until I am a licensed therapist for treating children who have been victims of trauma. This is just where I'm going. And um, I'm going to continue to pursue all the avenues that I can of getting myself out of here and purchasing a home. And that is pretty much all I have to say to you that I can think of. With the quarantine and everything, I hope everybody stays safe. I hope you all are smart enough out there to practice social distancing. And I hope that I can sort of find my groove and start putting out videos regularly. I love you guys. Bye.